Good evening, church. How are we tonight? It's good to see that we have another opportunity to gather. And uh, we're waiting for a few of you to join us here. Um, we are going to be continuing tonight looking at uh, Psalm 63 and the overall theme of developing a heart for God. Uh, but we uh, want to zero in tonight on meditating on Him. And uh, so we're going to do that in a few minutes, but I've got a couple of things that I want to share with you as we get started here this evening. Um, somehow, uh, I missed it that uh, the Ontario government has come out with a new ruling that uh, you can only meet in groups of five or less. Uh, and so because of that, our plans for the Easter uh, recording of the Easter music is going to have to take on a new um, appearance. So if I've contacted you about uh, meeting me at the church next Friday, uh, I am going to be recontacting you to let you know when we're going to record your segment. All right. Uh, but we are hoping to have a little bit of a special recording for the uh, Easter Sunday morning. Um, so that's the first thing, uh, is the new ruling for the Ontario government. Uh, the second thing, um, I forgot to mention Wednesday night, and I forgot to mention it this morning, uh, that we have a new granddaughter. Uh, in the midst of the worldwide pandemic, uh, little Hadley Karen Massacre was born to our son Mark and his wife Rebecca. That was uh, Wednesday morning and so we are uh, rejoicing in uh, this little one that has joined our family. Uh, we did make a flying trip to Woodstock on uh, Friday to uh, have a quick peek at her uh, from two meters away. Uh, didn't get to hold her. We're hoping that that happens very soon. Uh, but we're rejoicing in God's blessing. Everybody's healthy and doing well. Another thing I wanted you to make you aware of is tonight at 8 o'clock uh, on Facebook Live, the Collingsworth family is going to do a little bit of a musical presentation. So uh, if you follow them on Facebook, uh, you might want to tune in to, to their page at 8 o'clock and uh, join in the music that is uh, going to be presented. Uh, I'm sure it'll be a blessing. I don't know how you're making out uh, during this time of uh, forced isolation. I'm hoping you're doing well. I'm hoping you're encouraged and you're keeping your focus on the Lord and that things are going well for you. Uh, but uh, we're going a little stir crazy here. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to share with you something that happened uh, I was at the church for a little bit uh, Saturday to uh, do some printing and get some uh, different things done. And uh, when I came home, Marlene was so bored that she had done a video blog for the grandkids on how to make a cherry pie. Uh, and if you know Marlene and technology, that was challenging, let me tell you. Uh, so, But the kids were, uh, were having a great time watching it. And uh, so there's all sorts of things that we are doing uh, to try and occupy our time. Uh, I have an opportunity to do a lot more reading than I've had for a while, and uh, now I just have to discipline myself to actually do it. Uh, so I'm hoping you're keeping busy. I'm hoping that you're doing well and uh, that you're uh, spiritually and emotionally uh, doing great and that you're rejoicing in the Lord in spite of the circumstances that we find ourselves in. Uh, so we're going to look tonight back in Psalm 63, but we're going to look at a couple other passages of Scripture as well. Uh, we're going to look at uh, Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, and we're going to look at Psalm 119 and verse 97. Uh, it's good to see people jumping on and uh, joining us this evening. And so I hope and pray that uh, our time together in the Word will be of an encouragement to you uh, tonight. Because I think that what we're looking at tonight is truly uh, beneficial for us, even in these days of uh, social distancing and, 
and uh, forced isolation uh, that we need to understand the importance of meditation and uh, what meditation is and uh, who we should be and what we should be meditating on. So if you have your Bibles, I invite you to turn with me to Psalm 63 and we're going to look at verses 6 and 7 tonight. All right. Psalm 63 verse 6 says, When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. Uh, let's, let's start with a word of prayer and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll get into the message this evening. All right, so let's pray. Father, uh, we come before you tonight and we are thankful that we serve a God that is in control of all things that knows the beginning from the end, that is able to do the impossible. And uh, Lord, we do pray that this current situation that we find ourselves in would begin to turn around. Uh, Lord, we were not built for isolation. We, as your people, uh, thrive in community. And we miss our church family. We want to be together to be able to worship you. And so I pray that the circumstances that we find ourselves in would soon begin to turn around, that we would see this virus uh, under control. And uh, Father, very soon we'd be able to carry on with our ministry and reaching this community and around the world with the gospel of Christ. Lord, we love you tonight. And we, we pray that you'd help us, that you may be the one that fills our minds and our thoughts and uh, Lord, that we would not allow the anxiety that the media presses to become part of our lives, but that we may be, remain calm, that we may remain focused on the one who holds tomorrow in his hands. So we love you. We thank you for all that you do for us, and we pray that you'd bless us in this short time together. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. So Psalm 63, verses 6 and 7, I'm wondering tonight as we, begin, uh, we begin, have you ever had something kind of come into your mind and, and just you can't get it out, uh, and it just occupies your mind, and, and it can kind of get you worked up and, and a little bit anxious? Uh, I, that happened to me Saturday morning, about 4 o'clock in the morning, I woke up, and I began to think of all the stuff that I still had to do to prepare for Sunday. And uh, I uh, uh, just couldn't go back to sleep. So about quarter after four Saturday morning, I was downstairs here at my desk and working on messages. And, and uh, uh, it helped. I, uh, it helped a lot. And I got a lot of work done, uh, let me tell you, that early in the morning. Uh, but sometimes our minds become uh, focused on things that are not healthy. And in a time like this, in a time when we are uh, uh, craving information and wanting to know more and more about what's going on, and we turn our television sets on, and we tune into the local news, and, and we, uh, we can almost become overloaded with bad news. Uh, and, and I'm sure that what I'm saying resonates with you because uh, I'm a bit of a news junkie and I, uh, I tend to uh, gravitate towards the news. Um, I, I watch the news channels as often as I can and uh, there are uh, times where I just have to turn it off where it just is too much and uh, there's too much bad news and there's too much uh, coverage of the coronavirus. David here, uh, as he pens Psalm 63, uh, David, as we've seen uh, over the past several weeks as we've been looking at this uh, psalm, is on the backside of the desert. He's had to run for his life from his son Absalom, who is seeking to kill him. Uh, and he is on the backside of the desert, removed from everything that he's familiar with. He is removed from uh, his, his, the comforts of his home. He's removed from the uh, opportunity to worship God in the, the context of the temple or the, the tabernacle. Uh, he is uh, isolated, kind of like we are. 
He's isolated now on the backside of the desert. And as we've gone through this psalm and we've seen how David longs for God, how that he hungers and thirsts for him. Uh, and as we've seen verses one and two, uh, and uh, on and on David goes. But when we come to verses six and seven, it kind of uh, is almost applicable for the time frame that we're in because David says, when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. David now, just like you and I, had some sleepless nights. David says, as I lay on my bed in the night watches, in the in the hours of the night that are normally reserved for sleeping, uh, David says, I meditate on you. Uh, and I don't know about you, and I don't want to presume that you do this, but I'm prone oftentimes uh, when I wake up in the middle of the night or if I can't go to sleep at night, I'm prone to think of all of the issues and the problems and the things that I have to do the things that are occupying my schedule, the things that, that are important that I need to get looked after. And uh, those things tend to just occupy my mind uh, to the point that I can't sleep. And that's what happened Saturday morning. Uh, and it happens frequently with several of us I know. But David, rather than concentrate and allow his mind to be occupied with the fact that his son is trying to kill him. Rather than be occupied with the problems that encompassed him at this point in time, David meditates on God. He says, when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great if in those times, that we were able to occupy our minds instead of with problems, but that we were able to occupy our mind with the things of God, with the Word of God, that which is pleasant, that which is encouraging, that which is strengthening, that which calms us, that which keeps us focused, that which keeps us from sin. In a day of uncertainty, uh, and folks, the day and age in which we live is a day of uncertainty. But in the day and age in which we live, if there is ever a time that you and I need to focus our attention on God, that we need to meditate on Him and on His Word, it's now. Uh, the Amplified Bible renders this passage this way. It says, When I remember you on my bed, I meditate and thoughtfully focus on you in the night watches, for you have been my help. And in the shadow of your wings, where I am always protected, I sing for joy. The message renders it this way, and I'm not just, I'm not a big fan of the message, but I, I kind of like the way it, it uh, deals with this passage. Uh, the message says, if I'm sleepless at midnight, I spend the hours in grateful reflection because you've always stood up for me. I'm free to run and play. I hold on to you for dear life, and you hold me steady as a post. So the first thing I want us to do tonight is just spend a few minutes and, and uh, rehearse uh, what meditation actually is. The Hebrew word that is translated meditate here in Psalm 63 and elsewhere literally means to mutter. Uh, when one continually mutters God's word to himself, he's constantly thinking about it. It has the effect of calming. Meditation uh, has often been referred to as one of the spiritual disciplines. And uh, a few years ago, when we were looking at the spiritual disciplines, we, we talked about meditation, of spending time thinking on the things of God, thinking on the Word of God. Now, meditation, biblical meditation, is completely different than Eastern 
uh, religious re religion meditation because the Eastern religions say empty your mind where biblical meditation is filling your mind filling your mind with the things of God it is to concentrate and focus specifically on thoughts of God specifically on the Word of God so there are two basic Hebrew words that deal with uh, meditation in the Old Testament uh, the first means to mutter or to murmur, and the other means to talk to oneself, uh, speaking those ideas to oneself and remunerating them in your mind, going over them and over them. So when we read our Bibles in the morning, uh, or whenever it is that you sit down to read your Bible, uh, the idea is not to just rush through a passage of Scripture and read it and and move on with the rest of your day. But the idea is to take what you've read and to meditate on it, to glean from it everything that you possibly can that is encouraging will help you with the day that you face. Uh, meditation, uh, medical doctors actually say that meditating helps with digestion. It helps us with some of our our uh, physical functions as human beings and so it's good for us to pause and stop and meditate on that which God is doing for us that which God has told us in his word that which is encouraging and beneficial in our walk with him so in the day and age in which we live let me encourage you please let me encourage you turn the TV off don't sit in front of it and watch the news all day long. It's not healthy. It's not good for you. Instead, with the time that you have, spend it in the Word of God. Spend it in prayer. Spend it meditating on just how awesome our God really is. Spurgeon called this process the machine in which the raw material of knowledge is converted to its best use. He points to people who read the Bible and can even recite it, but who really know nothing of its power. Thus he says, it is because they fail to convert it to a useful state. Instead of putting facts into the wine press of meditation and fermenting them until they can draw out inferences, they leave them to rot and to perish. So meditation involves reflecting on the Word of God, reflecting on the attributes of God, reflecting on the goodness of God, the blessings of God in our lives, and then seeing how, if we're meditating on the Word, seeing how it applies in our life. How does it fit in? Where does the rubber meet the road, as it were, in the scriptures that we've read? It's not enough to read the Bible and forget about what we've read. It is essential, it is essential for us to take the scriptures and meditate. So, as we look at Psalm 63, and we look at all that David has said, and let me just rehearse for you quickly. David says, O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee, my soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches because thou hast been my help therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice when I meditate on God when I take time to focus all of my attention on him then I am reminded that there is help that I can find shelter and peace and strength under the shadow of his wings. 
Many of you have different hobbies, uh, and uh, you are uh, constantly consumed with that hobby. Uh, lately, I've had opportunity, uh, not over the last week, of course, with everything going on, but for several weeks, I've been going once a week to visit Arnold Marr and to try to encourage him. And uh, we've met in Arnold's workshop. And uh, all around Arnold's workshop, around the fireplace, there are all sorts of little quaint sayings about fishing. Uh, Arnold has been a fisherman in his day, and uh, he enjoyed it a great deal. Uh, and so when you are a fisherman, or when you are uh, someone who enjoys, whether it be baseball or, or whatever it is that is a hobby of yours, uh, it consumes a lot of your time, and it consumes a lot of your attention, and, and you think about it regularly. Uh, and so as believers, as followers of Christ, I think we need to try to focus our attention a little bit more than sometimes we do on God, on our Savior, on the Lord of our lives, so that He and His attributes and His power and His goodness are brought to our minds consistently time and time again. In this day of chaos and paranoia, we should not allow our minds to be overwhelmed by what we see on the television, but instead we should focus our minds on the Word of God, that which is powerful, that which is sharper than any two-edged sword. So let me turn back to, to Joshua chapter 1. <coughs> Excuse me. Joshua chapter 1, uh, in verse 8, <clears throat> It says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Uh, there is a blessing that comes from meditating. But Notice in Joshua 1.8, he says first that there is an observing to do that which we have uh, read, that which we are meditating on, that we observe to do, that we focus our attention on obedience, if you will, that we may observe to do that which he's told us, uh, and it protects us as we meditate on the scriptures. So meditation brings obedience, and I believe that meditation brings blessing as well. Uh, when uh, Joshua 1.8 was recorded, it said, Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Those who know and obey God's word will be prosperous and successful. Does that mean you're never going to have a problem? Absolutely not. Does that mean that every desire of your heart's going to come your way? The name it and claim it philosophy? No. We still have heartaches. We still have problems. We still have difficulties. But God honors the obedience of his people. And God honors when you and I focus our attention on his word and on himself. Uh, David had a lot to be worried about. David had a lot to be concerned about. Uh, I mean, he's on the backside of the desert. His son is trying to kill him. There's a great deal that he could be fretful and, and uh, anxious about, but yet, David says here in Psalm 63 and verse 6, When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, he focused his attention. He settled himself through the meditation of God and the Word of God. And so I want to encourage you to spend time looking at, thinking on the Word of God. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, uh, in a very familiar passage of Scripture, but Philippians chapter 4, 
uh, verses 6 through 9, says this, Be careful or be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, did you get that? We talked about peace this morning. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, <clears throat> finally, Paul says, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. We are to think on those things which are edifying, those things which go to building up, those things which are for our benefit, it's those things which are honest, those things which are just and pure and lovely and of good report. Those things are the things that should occupy our time. And so I know that in this day and age and a crisis we're going through that we want information and we want to know what's going on now. But folks, too much is not healthy for us. Uh, and so let us instead shift gears just a little bit and pick up our Bibles and read what God says to you and then allow that to occupy your mind. Allow that to occupy your thoughts. And I guarantee you, it's going to help your outlook. It's going to change the way you feel. Psalm 119 and verse 197 says, Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. All the day. You know, uh, one of the things that we have found to be true over the last couple of weeks is that we've got a lot of time on our hands. Uh, every one of us uh, have had to kind of shift gears just a little bit. We've had to try and occupy our time. Uh, Marlene made a video blog uh, for the grandkids. Uh, I'm thinking of doing one for the grandkids myself. I just don't know what I can teach them. I, I'll find something, uh, but maybe how to make a sermon. Maybe that'll help them. I don't know. But uh, we want to, instead of focusing on that which is so negative in this day and age, we want to spend time focusing on God. You know, we are living in exciting days. Uh, never in our wildest dreams would we think that we would have such an opportunity to spread the good news of the gospel, that every pastor that preaches the word every Sunday is now preaching to so many more people than he ever did before through live streaming, through the internet. Those things are exciting. And so let us spend time thinking on the things of God. Let us spend time focusing our attention on that which is critical for us as followers of Christ. Meditation can be seen as a sort of a conduit for receiving the blessings of God. But it's not about what we can get. It's not about doing it so that God blesses me. It's doing it so that I do experience that peace of God, that settledness, that quietness, that stillness in the midst of the chaos around us. I love you folks. Uh, it is, it is uh, with a heavy heart that we have seen so many of our programs and ministries come to a screeching halt. Uh, but at the same time, God is doing something and uh, we need to just spend our time focusing on him. Uh, I said this morning that so many of us have said for such a long period of time that we don't have time to spend in the Bible as we want, it, we want to. Well, now we do. Now we have nothing but time. And so it should not stop us. Instead, it should encourage us to dig into the scriptures to see what God says, 
and then allow that to occupy your time, occupy your mind, meditate on it, murmur it, roll it over in your minds. Uh, the crudest illustration I can find, uh, but the most effective illustration of what meditation actually is, is found in the pasture fields of the farms all around us. As cows stand there and chew that which they've eaten earlier, that they take into one stomach and then they bring it back up and they chew on it and they chew on it and they chew on it and they gain the nutrients and the benefits from it before swallowing it again. Meditation is taking that which has already been put into our minds, that which we've already read, and allowing it to consume our thoughts, allowing it to go over and over and over and over in our minds so that we may glean that which is beneficial. And this book is entirely beneficial. Every aspect of it from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21, it is beneficial for each and every one of us. So let me encourage you to spend time focusing on God, focusing on his word, allowing it to occupy your mind and see what God does for you this week. Uh, I love yous. And I know that this is difficult. I know that every one of us want to be with our church family. Uh, and uh, I see that Pastor Steve Bochter has uh, joined us from Northside Community Church in Kitchener and a uh, good friend of ours. And uh, we just want to uh, encourage our church family and his church family and everyone that's watching to not allow this crisis to get us anxious and worried and fretful. Uh, God is on the throne. And if I allow that fact to occupy my mind, if I allow that fact to be that which I resonate or I meditate on, uh, I will have a more settled outlook. That peace that we talked about this morning will be more prevalent and real in our lives. So let's close with a word of prayer, and then I'll just remind you of a couple of things, and uh, we will close off this evening's message. Father, we are so grateful that we serve such a great God. We are grateful that a crisis that has uh, turned the world upside down has become a platform and an opportunity for the gospel of Christ to be preached to the nations. Father, there have been opportunities for people who are anxious and worried uh, to hear the good news of the gospel. And I pray that you'd help us, that we would in these days seize the opportunities that you've given us to use our gifts to reach people, to share with them the hope that comes through Jesus Christ. Lord, you are amazing. And we are uh, just totally unable to comprehend the expanse of our great God. But we love you, and we are so thankful to be a part of your family. And I pray that you may take the circumstances around us, that you may use it for your glory, and that you may draw many to yourself, even in the coming week. Lord, help us to meditate upon you in the night watches. Help us to allow your word to occupy our minds. We love you. We thank you for the opportunities you give us. And I pray that in the week to come that you may help us to be drawn that much more closer to you. For We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. So don't forget, uh, if you are helping us out getting ready for the Easter uh, service, uh, I'll be contacting you this week to uh, uh, finalize the when and the where and the how. Uh, but uh, you keep praying for each other and keep praying for us. Uh, we are uh, expectant that God is going to use this for incredibly good things. 
And tomorrow morning, uh, I'll be sending out the email uh, devotional to you, and that's exactly what we're going to be looking at tomorrow, is uh, the, the end of Romans 8 from verse 28 to verse 39, uh, and the fact that God uses all things for the good of those that love him and those that are called according to his purpose. And so don't be discouraged. Keep your chin up. Keep pressing on. God is still on the throne. Have a good night.